Now, as you know, on this channel, there is a bit of an obsession with five cylinder Audis ranging from a van with a TTRS engine in it down to the two eight VRS threes I've had over the years. I even wrapped the first one in a tribute to the legendary Sport Quattro S1 E2 rally car. Yes, it is crazy to think that I actually went through with that back then. <laughs> I then moved on to the slightly older 2018 saloon, main difference being that it was a pre-OPF Dazza model. And that's pretty much been my fun getting and go everywhere type of car since picking it up in November of 2021. Going to all the usual motions, stage one, two, and even stage three on the stock engine with the TT700 hybrid turbo. It's been absolutely faultless for the past two and a half years, and I've had some great experiences in it. Whether it was going to Santa Pod and running a 10 with barely any effort, visiting the Nürburgring for the first time, or just doing 185 miles an hour on the Autobahn. So yeah, I genuinely had no reason to sell, even after a year at stage 3 it was running perfect. Granted, I do actually look after my stuff, over-servicing them and not launching at every traffic light in existence. But even despite that, you can't escape age on the chassis side. We're now in 2024, which makes that car 6 years old. And yes, at the moment it's fine, but as this was meant to be my get in and go everywhere type of car, I didn't fancy piling loads more miles onto it, as it'll just end up like every other VW project on this channel, where I'm changing suspension arms and wheel bearings in every video. So yeah, as sad as it was, the AV had to get traded on, leaving only one replacement option for someone like me. I know most of you probably could have predicted that. It's about time I jumped into the 8Y RS3 platform. It's been out for a couple of years and I think I've had my fun with the 8V. Now it is going to start raining as per usual in the UK. It was sunny half an hour ago so I got the car already. But we'll continue with the wall crown and show you a bit more about this particular one. But yeah, we'll start off with the most obvious thing and that's the fact that it is a saloon. I thought I'd stick with this sort of form factor. I haven't really got anything against the sport back. In fact, it's probably a bit more practical for my usage. But I think it does look pretty cool, especially in this particular spec. It is a Vorsprung, so it has got a lot of options standard. One of those being the panoramic sunroof, which when it's open, it looks absolutely fantastic. This thing's got around 480 miles now. It's a late 2023 car. I was weighing up whether to get one that was a 2022 with a bit more miles on it. But then a lot of them have maybe three or four owners now. But yeah, Vorsprung's come with everything all blacked out. So it does look quite mean in its kind of triple black kind of vibe. And of course, I have got the number plate on there, R5 sil. Yes, it could mean RS and 5 sil combined but R5 is actually the way the Germans describe it in line 5. If you look on all the technical documentation, it's an R5. It's the RS3 badge, the fancy Matrix AD headlights, which if I get the key out of my pocket, they do the whole little RS3 illumination. Nice little gimmick that, I guess, but it's cool nonetheless. We've got the 19 inch wheels finished in this almost triple color effect. I wasn't too sold on them originally. I was after the satin black ones that you get on the carbon edition and the launch edition. But when you see it on a gloss black car, I think it all works, especially once we've sorted out the stunt, because at the back here, yeah, that looks ridiculous, to be honest. It does drive very well because it's on DCC. That's adaptive suspension. RS3 is when it's optioned with that. They're no longer mag ride. It's the same as a Golf now. I can have a good guess that those dampers are made by Monroe. Now, see the front end of the RS3 is a lot more pumped up compared to the regular A3 and S38Y. You can see it by this little extension here and it goes into the side skirt. It looks very impressive. Those of you who are clued up on your RS3s will remember that the previous saloon, the 8V, never had a wider front end, but the Sportback did. But yeah, the whole Black Dot theme continues down the side. I've not done any modifications to this car. This is how an RS3 Vorsprung comes from the factory when it's finished in Mythos Black. Pretty much the main option this car doesn't have is the ceramic brakes, which come as part of the dynamic package, but I wasn't too fussed on all of that. We've also got Pirelli tires. You get one of two choices, it's either the Bridgestone Potenza Sports or these Pirellis, which have the rim protector, blacked out badges around the rear. We've got the RS Sports exhaust standard on the Vorsprung, which is now just tips on the edge. The exhaust is actually in there. As you saw in the clip at the start, it's got an OPF, so it's not the loudest of things, and it has got a soft limiter. But compared to a lot of cars now, it actually does still sound pretty decent, especially under acceleration. Another little cool thing as well, if you put your foot under there, that opens up. On a Vorsprung Sportback, you also get the button to close it. The saloon doesn't have such an option. It's up inside. It's still got that exact same smell you get in every new Audi. I don't know if it's the glue they use, but it's very distinctive. What I will say though, there has been a decrease in quality compared to the 8V generation. Because I've done so many miles on the previous car, I can notice some areas which just, yeah, just outright aren't as good. I'll start with a door card. We have got Alcantara on there as it always have done, but that leather is not the same as what you get on the seat. That's Napa leather. 
but that definitely is not that's something similar to what you'd find in like a dakota and the bmw same again with the armrest yes that is leather but it's not the same one that's on the seat and on the 8v it definitely was over here the cup holder is a bit scratchy looking as well yeah they just don't look like they're gonna last that long yes that section there's a bit better but they definitely did cost cut a bit on the 8y obviously on the rs it makes up for it because of the whole drivetrain and all of that which we will get into a second but yeah i thought i'd point that out and as well as the fact that it just doesn't look that sporty in here for the uk versions i know in europe you can get rs design packs and whatever with the vents and the floor mats and contrast stitching but yeah it's just more of a luxurious a3 vibe and yes i know what you're probably thinking forget all of that tell us about the steering wheel yes that is standard when you have lane assist i believe it is apparently this is due to a sensor being fitted in this wheel that helps with the lane guidance there's a basic lane assist and then there's one on top of that yeah i'm going to leave the steering wheel in place if it's going to affect the sort of features of the car because i don't want to lose options out on there but we will probably get it retrimmed because this perforated leather whilst it is nice and quality i just want to make it look a bit more rs in here so maybe fit the vents from an rs design pack car which i believe you can get for right and drive get some cooler floor mats and yeah just do it in an oem way if you've been watching my channel for a few years you'll know that i do have a certain way of doing things so it won't be all bodged and cheap looking i'll try my best now there's a couple of other things i do want to show you but before we continue i want to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor car vertical now if you're not already familiar with car vertical it's a website that allows you to obtain a full history check on any car all you've got to do is enter your registration or the vin i did do a report on this before going ahead but naturally because it's practically brand new there was nothing really to worry about but i always make sure to get one i do however have an example of a car that's not quite as perfect it was a weird purchase i made in like october november if you follow me on instagram you'll know what i mean i picked up a lexus is 300 sport crust for some reason it was going through auction on coal part classified as a category s it had slight wing damage and door damage so what i was thinking let's just do a live car vertical report on that and see if it brings up the category s status check vehicle confirm full check okay so here we go lexus is petrol 2002 so we've got the lovely 2jz naturally aspirated engine in it normally at the top if you're pretty familiar with these reports it's essentially the breakdown of it so odometer looks good financial legal status looks good uh, but damage has needs attention next to it yep insurance write-off as expected did i presume it just got crashed and they sent it into coal pot but there we go category s which means structural damage that is repairable now some reports do show you the photos of it at savage auction i of course already had that information so i wasn't too concerned but for example like this m3 on the side here you can see that it's completely obliterated so you know where to look out for if you're going to buy this car in future once it was repaired and whatnot so yeah folks that's car vertical nice and straightforward and as per usual i do have my own special link in the description if you click on that or use the code trh what they'll do is they'll save you 20 percent off your next report and yeah big thanks to them as well for their continued support of the channel right, let's pop the bonnet open okay so this is arguably the main reason you buy one of these and that's the lovely two and a half liter five cylinder engine power wise it's pretty much the same as the outgoing 8v the opf version it's also a very similar engine code as well being a dnwc the opf cars were dnwa and the pre-opf cars were daza if you've been following the tuning side of things on the ay rs3 you'll know that the ecu has been locked for the past few years and that's why no one's really done anything big with them but as of a few months ago companies like iros and various other companies in europe have started to push more power out to them there is an unlock for the ecu but i believe the gearbox is still unfortunately yet to be cracked and on the topic of time passing we've even got to a point where the 8y rs3 facelift is imminent that's how long it's taken some of you may be wondering why i didn't just wait for that and that's because i want to enjoy summer and have a new project to tinker with i wouldn't expect a change like we got with the 8v facelift you're not going to get an entirely new engine or anything like that we'll probably get the new front end with the whole 2d vibe and if you've been following me on instagram you will have seen that i flew out to germany to test out the s3 facelift and yeah the interior is very subtly changed they've kept the screen the same there's a few little differences with the shifter and they've moved over to sonos now rather than bang olofsson but yeah, i think the days of audi making massive changes to their internal combustion engines are kind of over we'll keep track of things regardless because if this is the last five cylinder powered rs3 i'll probably get one of the last model years right so that's the war crown done we're going to jump back in time now to around a week ago when i dropped the car off to mcc automotive for some ppf and a paint correction i've been visiting these guys for years now with the various project cars so it's only right we get the 8y sorted before hammering it on uk roads now some of you may be wondering why we need to do all of that on a brand new car we're going to get the torches out and show you the reason for that because in my opinion, I think that's probably one of the worst sets of swirls I've seen. Russ yeah, probably I've, I've seen worse. I've seen like really spray brand new cars and all sorts. But <laughs> in terms of swirls and on actual factory paint, this is quite bad. Now this um, is all from 
the dealership washing or whatever at the port or whatever they do. Yeah, it needs obviously machine polishing. So basically these are marks from how the car's been washed. So mm. uh, through our processes, we can obviously permanently remove these marks and obviously bring back the original finish to the factory paintwork. Yeah, there's a lot of um, unnoticed up here as well. It's just everywhere, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, literally all over the car. So yeah. the B pillars are always a nightmare, but they look about five years old there. It's crazy. Yeah, they look like they're off my Mark 5 R32. <laughs> How does it, is that just from one wash that's do you reckon? That's from one or maybe two washes, yeah. Because mm, it, it can't have had many, that's why I'm confused like how it's so bad, it's just... Yeah, I mean if it's been stood for a couple of weeks, it might have had multiple washes, because obviously it's been winter, it's been quite dirty, mm. so it might have had two, three, four washes possibly. But... That's true actually, yeah. It was registered towards the end of the last year, so it has yeah, been... So it's probably had a few washes then. Yeah, so it was, um, I think it was just sat around for a bit. So after it's machine polished, we'll get the car back out, rinse that off again, because you can get a bit of dust when you polish, and obviously you don't want dust under PPF. Front end protection package, which is the bonnet, the wings, the bumper, including all the trims and the grills. Obviously you've got the, the pan roof, so we can't really do the glass, but this leading edge here can get chipped, so we'll put a piece of PPF on there as well. Petrol cap's always a good idea, because obviously you open this mm -hmm. manually while the car's dirty, so you're likely to scratch the paint. So mm. we include that with every package. Okay, that's interesting, yeah, because that's true. I mean, people, you're just going to do that. Exactly. Then. Thank you, Phil. I've got a mach machine that out. <laughs> the car's already <laughs> a state. The car's already a state, so. Right then, Russell, that's the plan. I'm yep. going to leave it to it. Obviously, you're going to be doing a full detailed video on your channel, yes. which I'll link the video to in the description. And then, yeah, we'll have a look at the finished result. Right then, Russ, absolutely smashed it on that. I don't even know what to say. 
I'll let you take it away, I guess. <laughs> That's the main professional, yeah. I don't really know too okay. much about detailing. Uh, yeah, no problem. So obviously it's all been washed, decontaminated, clayed. Obviously the paintwork was quite swirly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all been machine polished to get all those marks out. Mm -hmm. um, we PPF'd basically the highest impact areas, so the bonnet, the wings, the bumper, the trim, the grill surround. So all of this is nice and protected from any future stolen chips, essentially. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. These were a nightmare, those get swirly. So they're also protecting the PPF, that, those and these two, because they're painted differently to the rest of the car. So the yeah, you guys will remember in the previous shot how bad those were. Around the back, so I know you like to use your cars to move around wheels yeah. and exhaust. Yeah, all, all hopefully all not with this one. <laughs> there is a piece here also on this ledge. Oh, yeah. Just about make out the end of it there. Yeah, that's so awesome. So it comes all the way down, right down to the grill area here, across and up, and then in, into the boot tray. Yeah, that's perfect to do it right up to this faker grill. It's the best way to do it. I think it's because it covers. Sometimes I have stuff. Ha hopefully not with this one, right? <laughs> but sometimes I have stuff hanging out, then it might clip here. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, well chuffed with that. And then the interior. So obviously these manufacturers love to put high gloss black on interiors at the moment. Which yeah. Is so the piece around the gear selector right. has been protected with gloss PPF. Okay, lovely. So this panel here is now protected yeah. from... So that may still have a few moisture pockets in it because that was done this morning. Okay. Uh, but that's been protected. They will obviously go away when the film dries out. Yeah. And then we've used matte PPF on the touch screen. The cool thing with this is it gets rid of fingerprints and the other thing that I quite like is that even though it's now in a more of a matte finish the actual virtual cockpit on these cars is that type of film so it almost matches yeah. yeah so whilst factory this is all gloss including this side trim and this is gloss now you've got more of a contrast and obviously if you look there no real marks now which is very cool um it's just these extra details I love that you guys have gone over okay. it's just um okay. it makes it just all the more pleasant experience We've obviously got this very boss looking steering wheel that I'll sort out but I'll leave that for another video. But yeah, that's the RS3 all detailed and protected. I think I'll leave you to it now, Russ. You've probably had enough of me talking and walking around the car. But in order to get a similar sort of job done on this, the best to hit you up on Instagram, place yeah, like that. Instagram or Facebook. Um, we've got a new website launching next week or so as well. Obviously all our price and stuff will be on there. Okay, and you're based now in Redditch, and it before it was Redditch Warsaw. It was Warsaw now, Redditch, so B98 area. Cool, let's head back home. Right then, so we'll keep things short and sweet with this video. That's the reveal of the 8Y RS3, new project car for the channel. I'm buzzing to get started on this. I love these cars, the platform, and just generally Volkswagen Group, as you guys know. This isn't the end of the project stuff. It's more of a supplementary thing just to fill in voids when I haven't got back orders to deal with and parts broken. I think it's good to have both types of vehicles on the channel because a lot of you guys have been watching for a few years when I just used to do newer stuff and you may not really want to see your old Passat getting done. That's kind of for my own benefit as well. I love working on stuff. But yeah, before we go, I just want to give a massive thanks to another company that's helped support me over the years, and that's Advanced Vehicle Security. They fitted a tracker to this thing and got me all sorted for insurance reasons, because you can't really get insurance these days on a car like this without a tracker. It's all S5 approved. I've got all the functions that I need to. There's even a fob where I can remotely turn it off and what have you. They're based in Birmingham, so definitely want to check out for all you local folks. As you know, our city is... Not exactly the safest of places when it comes to car theft. Just tell them I sent you and they'll look after you. But yeah, follow me on Instagram, subscribe for new content to come and look out for the first drive in a few days time. But yeah, take care folks.